Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Live Paint Bucket tool in Adobe Illustrator. In my color series, I've shown you a number of different ways that you can apply color to your objects on your artboard, but I felt like the series wouldn't be complete if I didn't cover this somewhat hidden and often overlooked little tool. First of all, you've really got to be looking to find the Live Paint Bucket tool, and second of all, it's not a super intuitive tool, so if you don't know how to use it, you might get frustrated and just go back to using the swatches panel but it does have some cool features so stick with me and I'm going to show you how it works and what you can do with it. The icon for the Live Paint Bucket tool looks like this picture on the top left corner of my artboard. Now to find that, you've got to have the advanced setting on your left toolbar. If you only have one column of tools here, then come up to Window, down to Toolbars, and in the Flyout menu, choose Advanced. Then I'll come over to the left toolbar, and on this Shape Builder tool, I'm going to press down with my mouse and hold until I have a Flyout menu, and here Here's where I can choose the Live Paint Bucket tool. The keyboard shortcut is K. Now when I choose this tool, my cursor changes and there are several symbols that are visible. If yours doesn't look like this and it looks like this instead, then you want to go to your keyboard and turn off your caps lock. And when you do, you're going to have all of the symbols that I have here. Now, I did make a larger drawing because my cursor is so small. I want to explain what all of these mean. First, I have this tilted paint bucket that has a not allowed symbol in front of it. And what that means is that right now my cursor isn't hovering over anything that can be recolored. But the moment that I click on something that can be recolored, then that symbol disappears. Next, I have this black pointer arrow, and that arrow is what you need to center over whatever object it is that you're recoloring with the Live Paint Bucket tool. And that's important because sometimes the pieces that you're recoloring are going to be smaller than your cursor itself. So if you have that black arrow pointing right in the center of the object, then you're going to be sure and get the right object colored the way you want it. Then above that black arrow, we have this color bar, and it has three color swatches on it. The center swatch is a little larger than the two on each side, and that's because it's our active Live Paint Bucket Tool color. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can change that color. The first one is to just come over to the Properties panel, click on the Color Fill icon, and click whatever color you want to change. Now that active color is changed to orange, but the swatches on either side of it also changed. And I want to explain why that is. So I'm going to come up and get the Swatches panel. I'll go to Window, down to Swatches. And then I'm going to grab the tab and dock it next to the Layers panel. And as a matter of fact, anytime that I'm working with the Live Paint Bucket tool, I always add that Swatches panel to the Properties panel so that it always stays open when I want it to. Here we see the color highlighted. That's the center of my color bar. And if you'll look closely, the color to the left on both the color bar and in the Swatches panel are the same color, and the color to the right, both on the color bar and the swatches panel, are the same color. What Illustrator will always do is show you the color to the left and to the right in the swatches panel because you can use the left and the right arrow keys to move to either of those colors. To show you how that works, I'll press the left arrow key one time. Now the center swatch on my color bar has changed, which means I have a new active fill color and the color has also changed in the swatches panel. This time I'm going to press two times to the left, and that's going to get me to this dark purple color, both on the swatches panel and as the active color on the color bar. So you get the idea how this works. We either go to the left or I can go to the right. I'll use the right arrow key and I can just keep pressing the right arrow key and I'm going to go now from the pink to the orange and the green. And this is how you change the color of your live paint bucket tool. 
but we also have an up and a down arrow key and we can use those to change colors as well just maybe not the way you would expect my swatches panel is going to look different than yours because I've added different colors and I've also added color groups now the color groups are symbolized by a little file at the beginning of the swatches that are in that color group your first set of colors is not going to have a file in front of it but this entire area here is is one color group. So if I use the down arrow key, Illustrator is going to take me to the beginning of the next color group. And if I press the down arrow key again, I'll go to the next color group and the next and the next. And if I press down again, I don't have anywhere to go down, so I'll start back up at the top. The up arrow key works in the same manner, just in the opposite direction. Once you move to a new color group, then you use the right or the left arrows. If you get to the end, then it takes you back to the beginning rather than moving you to the next color group. You have to do that manually either by pressing the down arrow key or simply by clicking on it. And when you move away from the swatches panel, you see the active color both in the swatches panel on your color bar and on the left toolbar. In addition to changing the color of the Live Paint Bucket tool, we can also customize it in some other ways. With the tool active, all I have to do is press the Return key on my keyboard, and that opens up the Live Paint Bucket Options dialog box. Now, if I didn't have the tool active, I could double-click on the icon on the left toolbar, and that opens the dialog box as well. With these options, I recommend that you leave paint fills checked so that the Live Paint Bucket tool will fill your objects. You can leave the paint strokes checked if you want the Live Paint Bucket to change the color of your strokes. And I recommend you always leave the cursor swatch preview turned on so that you're able to see the color that is active for the Live Paint Bucket tool. Next, we have the highlight feature where Illustrator places a highlight around the strokes of the object that we're hovering over before we colorize it. And we can even choose the color. The default setting is for a red highlight. But if you're using a lot of red objects, you might want to just twirl down here and choose another color. You can also choose the width of that highlight to make it larger or to make it smaller. I'm going to leave these settings the same and press OK. And here you can see what the highlight looks like. Whichever object is highlighted, that's the one that's going to have the color applied to it if I press down with my mouse. So now you know where to find the Live Paint Bucket tool and how to change its live color, but that's only part of the process. I'm going to move to the Layers panel and hide the layer we're on and pick up some shapes that I've created and I'll click with the live paint bucket tool on all of these shapes. I don't have anything locked but nothing is happening and that's because the live paint bucket tool will only work on objects that are placed inside of a live color group. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and select the objects and convert them. Now I can do that in one of three ways. First I can come up to Object, down to Live Paint, and in the Flyout menu I can choose Make, or I can use the keyboard shortcut Option Command X. But the simplest and fastest way, in my opinion, is once you have these objects selected, go back and get the Live Paint Bucket tool, keyboard shortcut K, and simply hover anywhere over the group. Now, all of these strokes have turned to red, and I have a message that tells me to click to make a Live Paint group. So anywhere in this selection, I can click, and now all of these objects have been converted to a Live Color group. And the neat thing that happens now is anywhere I have overlapping objects, Illustrator is going to take those overlaps and create individual pieces out of them. We call these faces, and we can color each of these faces individually. 
Now all I have to do is move to the swatches panel, select the color group I'm going to use, and begin coloring. Now I'll click down to color this object, and I can just click around and apply that color, and whenever I want to change the color, remember I just use the right or the left arrow key. I'm going to move to the right and click here. Now if I want to apply the same color to several different faces that are connecting, then all I have to do is click down on one, and drag across it to the next one and the next one and the next one and then release my mouse and the color has been applied to all of these. Then if I want to paint the same color at the same time on objects that aren't touching, I use the keyboard shortcut Shift L. Now my cursor changes and what I'll do is select one object, then hold the Shift key down so I can select multiples and when I have the objects selected that I want to recolor, I'll come over to the swatches panel and click on a color and then click on the artboard to complete that process. Now, if you remember from the Live Paint Bucket Tool Options dialog box, we can also paint the color of the strokes. To do that, I've got to go back and get the Live Paint Bucket Tool keyboard shortcut K, and instead of placing my cursor in the center of the object, I place it right along the edge, and when I get in the right spot, my cursor changes to a paintbrush with a color bar above it, and I can see the center swatch in the color bar doesn't have a color applied. So I'm going to use the right arrow key and press one time and that would give me a white stroke or I'll press again that's going to give me a black stroke. Let's go one more time and change this stroke to a red color. Now once I have the color that I want I'll press down with my mouse and move away and my stroke has been painted red. Let's try that one more time. I'll move over to another object, hover right on the stroke. I have the red color active. I'm going to press down with my mouse, and I have another red stroke. And that's how easy it is to change the color of your strokes. Now, one more thing I want to show you, if you want to add another object to your live color group after you've created one, then you can do that as well. I'll get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle right here on top. Then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select all of the live color group and this additional rectangle, and I'll use the keyboard shortcut Option, Command, X, and now this additional rectangle has been added to the live color group. Well, I'm going to get the live paint bucket tool again, keyboard shortcut K, and I'll speed up the video and finish coloring this design. As I hover over the various faces, I click to add color. I use the right and left arrows to change the active color, and if I don't want to use the arrows, I can click directly on a color in the swatches panel and change it that way. And now I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect all of this design. And right away I see something I need to fix. I wanted all of these objects to be the same color, but I'm left with these strokes, which I need to do something about. So I'll get the Live Paint Bucket tool again, keyboard shortcut K, and I'm going to move over and hover on this stroke right here. And we see the paintbrush, and the center swatch is a no fill, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to click down here, and that removes that stroke. I'll come around to the next one, click here. Move down and click here. Let's get this one here, and then right up here in the corner, get that one. Now that's more like what I had in mind. Now I also have some red strokes, which I could come in and change to black, but I'm not going to do that because I want to show you how to change all of the strokes at the same time. Now to do that, I'm going to have to move out of this live color group. So I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select the group, and then I go up to Object, down to Live Paint, and click on Expand. Now with all the objects still selected, I can come in and apply a black stroke to everything, or I can remove the stroke, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll come to the Properties panel, click on the icon, and just select No Fill, and I'll click on the artboard, and here's the final design. But we still haven't covered everything there is about the Live Paint Bucket tool. I'm going to undo the move, keyboard shortcut Command Z to remove the strokes, and Command Z again, and we're back to a live color group. The way I know that is because the handles inside of the bounding box all have little stars inside of them. 
I want to show you what you can do if you decide you don't like the color scheme that you've created at all. You can revert everything back to just the lines. So I'm going to come back up here to Object, down to Live Paint, and I'm going to press Release. Now when I press Release, I lose all of the color that I added, and I'm left with half point black strokes. I'll click on the artboard and deselect everything and you can see we're pretty much back where we started however when I started I had a white fill on everything and now we've already covered a lot but I want to show you how the live paint bucket tool is really useful in a completely different situation I'll move back over to the layers panel and I'll hide this shapes layer and open up this lines layer I'll select the lines get the live paint bucket tool keyboard shortcut k and we're going to hover over the lines and click to create a live color group now I'll move to the swatches panel and we'll choose this color group right here and i'm going to begin to click on these areas but nothing is happening and that's because each of these areas isn't completely enclosed but the really cool thing about the live paint bucket tool is you can customize it to ignore those gaps to do that we go up to object down to live paint and we're going to click on gap options now the first thing is gap detection and i always leave this checked because you never know when you're going to have a small gap in your artwork that you might not even realize is there but below that i can customize the size of the gap and we already know that illustrator's not detecting any small gaps here so i'm going to twirl down and let's look at medium gaps still zero Let's try large gaps, still zero. I'm going to have to customize the gap size here. So I'll click on this and I'm going to increase the size of the gap. And immediately Illustrator has picked up on three gaps. It tells me here and it also is drawing a little red line to complete the gap there. Let's go ahead and increase this a little bit more. Now we have five gaps, but I still see I have another one here and I'm gonna increase this even more until I have, there's six gaps and I think that's probably all that we're gonna be able to use. Now the gap preview color can be changed just like the highlight color can be changed. The default setting is red. And then I have the option of closing the gaps with paths. I'm going to click here to show you what happens. Illustrator warns me that that's going to turn off gap detection and it's going to close all of these gaps by inserting paths into the artwork. And I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to say no. And then I'm going to say OK. Because what I'm going to do now that I've customized the gap detection is fill each one of these areas with color. I'll use this right arrow key as I change the color. And you can see how useful this tool can be when you're working with open paths. Now I want to give you one more example. So I'll go up to the layers panel and hide the icon layer and the lines layer and reveal the birds layer. And I'm going to recolor this bird on the right. So I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V and select both the bird and this line which I've placed down the center of it. Then get the Live Paint Bucket Tool, Keyboard Shortcut K, and I'm going to move to the Swatches panel and select this color group, and I'll begin to paint this bird. I'm speeding up the video, but even without speeding it up, this only takes a couple of seconds. I'm using only two colors in the color group, and I change colors with that right arrow key. Then I'm going to get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and select my group, and come up to Object, down to Live Paint, and then click on Expand. And then with everything selected, I'm going to hide these strokes. So I'll come over and click on the Stroke icon, remove the strokes, and then click on the artboard to deselect the object and I end up with a totally different look than the bird on the left. And frankly, I'm seeing a lot of this type of coloring in artwork today where traditional colors are replaced to give a more abstract look. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned some things about using the Live Paint Bucket tool in Adobe Illustrator. Now that you know how to use it, it should be easy and fast to recolor your artwork too. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.